so put the link back up just in case they came back uh, light of light she looks white to, yeah that's why she if she would her hair would have been jet black it would have been different Dominicans are probably descendants from the descendants from the original black Spaniards just like Haitians are probably from the original black French who lost their anything could be possible but uh when you look at the food the cuisine you know Pan Africans want them to stop it through so-called racism claim. Okay, we got Pookie and Al back up. Okay, Pookie says your device is not connected. I'm gonna let my man Al up on the uh, channel. What's going on? Is the Al show? Uh, a lot of people may have uh, seen or heard the man. And uh, recently, we were on the Psychopathist panel, and they were talking about You're right. Mixed well, race. they were talking about biracial people. And uh, they were discussing, well, and they were making a fair argument when the by rate. And they'd be, I, can people see it now? I think there was a problem with that. Uh, oh, yeah, he put it back up. Yeah, it was weird because I saw the replay. I was like, why was he got taken down for some reason? Do you know why? I think he said something about the, the subject matter or one of the clips he played or something. Or, or somebody oh, complained. It must have been the Tiger Woods. I think it's the Oprah. Oh, okay. Because it was Tiger Woods. I, 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 I can see now. Yeah, probably that. Okay. Yeah. So because you, if you if you play clips, yeah, that's a sure way. That's why I was talking through that news bite just to make sure. Something yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know. I got to be brutally honest. I didn't know that you were gonna be doing like an hour long intro. Oh, I didn't know I, it was an hour, but it, see, it's the good thing. Yeah, it was guys long, and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, how long have you been on YouTube, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, in this channel, I think, what, since 2014, on this channel. Okay, so I, I had another okay. channel before this, but haters, okay. haters came around, you know. <laughs> oh, so you had problems with people? Yeah, they, 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 they took the other channel well, down. The other know, channel was a lot I, more popular. Right. Well, do you... Well, let me just because uh, I'm curious because you asked me to come. I guess because you saw me on the because we had been on the panel, right. and it's interesting. I think you mentioned in because I, I I I don't ever really look at the description of these videos until they actually go up. But in the description, I happen to check it out. You say that I guess you are interested in what the the Latino Hispanic population, right? Because I'm not well, an expert in that area. I mean, I know some degree of it, but right, but mostly from mixed race people, yeah. Right, and that, and and that's why I, I figured what you discuss actually coincides with the topic because they're actually mixed mixed as well. They just like mislabeling themselves because you know nobody wants to be black these days, but <laughs> so they want to choose white in Spain. I, I'm, I'm just making the, the point that Spain. See, they, they, they accuse the what they call the Anglo white man of atrocities and oppression, but they let Spain off the hook. I'm like, okay, wait, I mean, do you guys, did you uh, go take classes to, to speak Spanish? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you had an interesting point. Now, you had an interesting point when you said Spain. I think it was, I don't know, it was a Mexican American war. But one of the, you were talking about how Spain was the actual colonizer. Right. Right. And they never blame Spain because they seem to want to claim Spain. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. When you talk about claiming Spain, now, again, I have to state I'm just a biracial guy, white, black, biracial guy. So I'm not Latino nor Hispanic. So let me put that disclaimer out. But if your name were Jose, uh, then you would fit the bill. <laughs> so I got to, you know, I want to make that clear. So. I'm not here as an expert in that area, but more um, I'm just discussing some of the aspects of the topic, more as it relates to mixed race people. So um, what I will say is the term, like what a lot of people from a lot of either South American or Central American countries and also Mexico have in common is language, right? If they right. speak Spanish, Spanish is a European language. 
I mean, when you think about it, it's it's interesting. Spanish is a European language. So when you're talking, they're claiming Spain. Well, to begin with, some people are claiming Spain, one, because of language. They speak the language. Right. But we speak English speak, and nobody claims yeah. uh, England. <laughs> well, it's the difference is the United States came about as a split from England. Right. And, and, right. You so, know, Texas, Mexico split from Spain, but they still claim, and, and the other countries split from Spain. Puerto Rico, they, and Puerto Rico is a part of the United States, but they still claim Spain. They they claim that the U.S. Well, that's, well, they're actually, another, they're yeah, another they're another part case. of the United States, but they're a territory, so they're not right. a right. fully. They're they're kind of a half and half, so to speak. But, but they're like the Mexico. They're like Mexico too, because they say that the United States is colonizing them, but yet they don't blame. No, they're right. Once, they are being when, colonized because they're not a state. But, but See, they're one Spain, of the possessions but, of the United States. The U.S., you have to keep in mind this. The United States is an empire. I don't know if people were taught this in schools, but the reality historically is the U.S. is an empire. And the U.S. has remaining colonial possessions. Among these possessions are Puerto Rico, Guam, I'm trying to think, uh, American American Samoa, Samoa, and Uh, I think it's Guantanamo Bay. Well, that's a part of Cuba, but I mean, technically a part of Cuba, but yeah, I know what you mean by that. But so the U.S. is an empire. So when, because uh, I know people who lived in Puerto Rico who said that it was almost like a colonizing relationship there, right. you know, with the Puerto Rican, I think that. in the 50s, the Puerto Ricans even tried to assassinate uh, Eisenhower. Well, yeah, you have a uh, independence movement in yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah, you had an independence movement. I, I don't know if it's still around, but, maybe. But you know, um, I mean, part- what I mean is the more um, the militant version, like the. the so they the attacked the United. Military. They attacked. They, they attacked the United States. But you know what the funny part is? They never say that they were colonized by Spain. <laughs> so it's like well, because they were, Yeah, but, but but they're not concerned with like Puerto Rico is not Puerto Rico is not concerned with Spain. They're right, that's the, the whole, that's, right, that's the whole thing. territory of the United States. So yeah. if they were a territory of Spain, that would be a different story. They, they used to be. Well, they're not anymore. They're a territory of the United States. So their relationship is with the U.S. So they, in, in Puerto Rico, I don't know the extent of it, but you do have an independence movement there. Uh, right. But with the independence movement, there still are people who want to be independent of the U.S., to be an independent nation. And um, that's so that's significant. But see what yet when you talk about Spain and the and again, you have to look at language because that's the unifying a uh, unifying effect. A lot of peoples in South Central American and other countries speak Spanish. A European language, right? They that's also. Why they think well, well, everybody doesn't think they're European, right? Well, I I just read stats and ninety one percent identify as white. Ninety one percent of whom? Uh, Hispanics. They, they, all of them. They say. Oh, at least all the ones that they uh, looked up. I think it was sixteen million that they uh, checked out. Are you referring to? Um, Latino or Hispanic people in the United States? Uh, yes. Okay. So you're saying 91% identify as I guess it would be more white, white Latino or something along that line. Right. Or just plain white, yes. Well, I don't know and- if they could say that they're white, but they could say you know, there's a distinction. I understand where if you deal with Latino, Hispanic, or what have you, there's, you could mark, I don't know if this is still done in forms or was done in forms. Maybe somebody in the audience knows, but you can distinguish. Because what you have today is you have a Afro-Latino population, right? 
That's what they call them, but I mean, I always ask this question. That's what they refer to themselves as Afro-Latino. Well, I don't think all of them refer to themselves as that, but if they call them Afro-Latino, no, what, are, I what mean, are the other ones? Right. Well, what I'm saying is you have a, a pop, you, you have people who refer to themselves as Afro-Latino and distinguish themselves as Afro-Latino. Yeah, but I think more, more, I think other people on the outside call them Afro-Latinos more so than them calling themselves that. Um, no. I think they choose to do that. That's part of it. It's not people taking that designation and saying you're Afro-Latino. It's those individuals choosing to identify. I think that's how it came about. Is It was a way to distinguish themselves, uh, to be Latino and distinguish, them, distinguish themselves from other Latinos. For obvious well, reasons. Well, I think uh, it's the opposite. I think the ones who claim to be white, they want to distinguish uh, the ones who are black in order yeah, to but try that's to always, legitimize yeah, themselves. Yeah, but that's always, been the, that's always been the case. Because they see themselves, a number of them, depending on who you're talking about, see themselves as um, European or more European or Latino, but European. So there's a differentiation, it seems to me. Well, I mean... Well, uh, I'm curious. Well, uh, what I'm wondering is, why is this of interest to you? I, I don't understand why it's of interest to you. I'm oh, well, well, as in the intro, you know, I, I've been noticing an uptick in Mexicans and here in New York and the whole Northeast, really, in the and from what other people tell me, the Midwest and the South. So, and watching those auditing videos, a lot of them are Hispanic. And I noticed that their interactions with Black people are quite different from their interactions with white people. You know, with white people, they, they give them respect. With Black people, you know, they'll call them names it gets, and call them some slick names, but they hope that they don't really decipher it. But they don't they don't overplay their hand with black people because they know black people will get out of hand, you know, and and, and deal with them. <laughs> like one guy pulled a knife on one guy, he was ready to slice him up. <laughs> and they got scared. Uh, you just can't go around pointing cameras in people's faces, man, because you know they wonder what you're here for. And that's what that guy asked for. He's like, "What are you here for?" He pulled that knife out. He's ready to take action. Mm. Interesting. So you're saying that where you are in, you're in the East Coast, right? Right. Okay. So you're saying there are more Mexican people coming up to the East Coast. Right. And, and you can oh, clearly see the license plates, uh, tons of California, Texas, uh, Nevada. Hmm. Interesting. It, I mean, wasn't aware of that. I'm not Cal surprised, but it's interesting. California and Texas license plates have been as common as seeing Florida, Georgia and Virginia plates now. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Right. right. So um, I'm curious, like you were on, just to go back, to, I, I was curious. What was it about Psychopathius's um, panel that interested you about it? I know this is out. Uh, a little off the subject. Oh, no, no, we're going to get I'm into that, so that's fine. And Pookie, I'm coming okay. to you in a minute. I don't know what happened to this other private chat. I don't know why I can't see it on the thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm always on his channel a lot of times when he has interesting discussions. And uh, oh, okay. so, you know. So you're regular. I, okay. Yeah, so that's one of my topics I like talking about because I actually disagree mm -hmm. with their premise, and I guess it would be your premise too. <laughs> that uh, biracials are not black. And sometimes they come up with the word science to say science shows that, that you're not black. But see, I like to use the word science too to counter that and say that science shows that you guys are black too. Notice I use the word too. <laughs> well, here's, here's the problem. When you say that, see, the, um, the binary nature of the United States is different from that of most other countries. So everywhere else in the world, mixed race people are just that, mixed race. 
And in the U.S., it's very confused. So, um, and virtually most other communities gatekeep. So they, if you're mixed race, um, if you're biracial or multiracial or something, or at least biracial at least, you're not considered wholly monoracial. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen nope. most. Uh, the African American community, for whatever reason, even in African communities uh, and in African nations, you can't do that. But African American is different um, in that. But then again, it comes from an historical legacy, right? It comes from an historical legacy of the uh, imposition of segregation. Now I have to let you and know when, that people, people on this channel, we don't like that uh, African American title. Oh, okay. <laughs> Black, we, we don't accept black. that. Okay, I don't know why. Black, but, well, it's fine. No, because we, oh. because we can't substantiate the African part. That's why. Uh, that's odd, but so be it. Um, I'll just say black. Um, so black. Uh, let me see. So uh, in black communities, what's happened is that uh, because of what happened with. Plessy v. Ferguson and the imposition of one drop rule, what you had is this kind of sort of forced inclusion, right? So instead of what it used to be, which was mixed race people had their own communities and they had their own organizations and institutions and societies and so forth, they were a force to become part of another community. And which community is that? The African, the black community. Oh, they had okay. to be so, part of our community. Okay. So, For, yeah, that's not a good idea, forcing uh, people on, on people uh, well, and, and denying them of uh, being white, right? Well, it didn't deny them that. It denied them their status. Of oh, being white, right? You know, especially in the, in the you know, not of being white. They couldn't be white, per se. So what status would they have if, if, if black is not the right status? Well, like I said, it was it actually in some southern states, it was actually uh, a bit more complex because if you were X amount of percentage, then you weren't necessarily, then you weren't black. If you had a certain percentage of European ancestry or whatever, you weren't necessarily black. You weren't considered black. When the one drop rule came, it diminished all that. There was just one gauge, which was, I think, if you had a grandparent, that was black or basically if you had any ancestry so basically it would be the same thing you had a grandparent or you had someone in your family or you had you know you had the ancestry right, then you you're automatically people, you, that right you know what people call that they, 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 they call that white supremacy that's what they call that well actually it's just the one drop rule it could be a part of white supremacy true uh, it's also called, I think, hypo descent. Um, but the thing about it is that mixed race individuals no longer had a status and a space tenuous at best in American society. So for those who were, say, half black, half white, or white, black, biracials, or black, white, biracials, they had no space or place anymore in American society. Right? Because after all, things can change very rapidly. Anybody who knows about, anybody can see that with the road decision being overturned. Things can change like that overnight. So what happened was that mixed race people became part of another community, were forced to at least be, a number of them were forced to become part of another community because of the law because of the way the law saw them. Right. They had so, no... Uh, so what you're saying, uh, maybe flexibility. Uh, if, if the law didn't force them to be black, uh, they would probably prefer to be uh, the privileged white, right? Because this is the way I well, look at it. I try to put myself well, in your yeah, shoes. Yeah, but see, see you're, because you're thinking the binary way of America, right? If you're not well, no, no. one thing, well, you're me, automatically me, another. No, let me explain. So I try to put myself... In your shoes, and, and another lady called well, me. Chicks. I, I keep bringing, but 
you would well, put yourself in the shoes of individuals. Right, right. And another one is like, like that. Michi- in, in that. Go ahead. Have you heard of Michi X? I've heard the name. I don't know much about her. Okay, no, is she biracial? Half, she, right. She's half Polish, half black. And okay. I like. And I always mention her on Psychopathia's show because whenever they have that conversation, they say biracials aren't black. But then I tell him, yeah, Michi X is Polish. And then he has to backtrack off of his uh, uh, thing. I'm like, okay, well, who, he, he says that she's who, not Polish. Who are you saying that about? Sorry, who was that you said that about? Oh, Psychopathia's. He says that, um, uh, you know, mixed biracials are not black. But then when I say Michi oh, X. Yeah. Michi X is Polish. Then he says, no, she's not. I'm like, what do you mean she's not if she her father is Polish? <laughs> so you oh, said yeah, biracial. I remember you, you mentioned that. Now I remember. You actually yeah. mentioned that on the panel when he was there, right? Right. I always do because that's the showstopper right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't stop him. He kept arguing from what I understand because I left the panel and he was still arguing. <laughs> like, I don't know. He comes there sometimes, right? Because I oh, thought yeah. he and psychopathias don't get along. But, uh, yeah, so no, no, that's a woman. But uh, she, and, and they they do know each other. They, they're affiliated with with each other. I guess that's why he can't really go against her. He wants to accept her as black when she, because she's supposed to be a black activist. That's the funny part about it. But she's Polish. Now she yeah. says, oh, so he he <laughs> likes Michi. Well, he likes. I don't know. See, here's the thing about RBI. You, I don't know him that well. I, I, you know, like I said, I've been on his platform. I don't know, a couple months or so now, but I, I don't know him extremely well. You know him, okay, right? Yes, yeah, psychopathy is yes. No, 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 uh, RBR. Oh uh, no, RBR. Actually, I don't know him at all. Actually, the the one there were two times that. Uh, only two times out of the years I've been on Psychopathia show that we were on the panel together and the first time he was talking so much nonstop that I couldn't get a word in so I just Mm -hmm. left. Then the second time once he came on, I knew he was coming (laughs) on I said, forget it, I don't even want to do battle with this guy. Well, I I told you that he was arguing after I left because I had to go, I mean, I was there long enough and said what I needed to say and and he was still arguing there because like so um yeah I didn't know I have to be honest I really didn't know why where his I've heard his views but I don't know why he was so kind of wrapped up in it that was the thing I didn't get but I don't know it's really strange because as somebody who is biracial when I see a and the lady that was there on Psychopathia's panel, I think she brought up a good point. She said, there are black people who are so get so really kind of emotional when, because I agreed with her when she said she believed in gatekeeping for her community and all that. And I, I disagree with her. I thought, I thought she was right. Because every other ethnic and racial group, they will never allow mixed race people to be considered one of their own. You know, partially right. some of their own, fine, but but they're not, I mean, they don't operate that way. But you know what's funny? The Hispanics, if you're half white, they'll accept that. If you're half black, then they act like you're something else. I'm like, hey, that doesn't make any sense. Because a lot of you, most of them, they got black in them one way or the other. That's why I showed the Moorish thing. Because Spaniards, when they came over here, they were mixed with Moors. But it's clear that they were on a different side. So, <laughs> Well, I think you have to take that up with them. Oh, yeah, I do. That I, yeah, that I, that I don't know. Um, I know it's, it gets rather, from what I hear, it's rather complicated. It's actually similar to our situation, except that there's a little more overt. No, I hear it's really tough, but I mean, I mean, it's different because you have, you're talking about community communities from different countries, right? Different right. nationalities and so forth. Right. Whereas if you're talking just about biracial people in the U S it's whatever group you're or groups you are with and whether 
that but community. Even with that, how it's, that it's community different too, because everybody's white parent is different. For instance, uh, matter of fact, uh, what, what's your uh, your white parent? What, what's their ethnicity? What's their ethnicity? Yes, or nationality, or whatever. Well, both my both my my family's American, so I don't have immigrant. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. like so well, that's why see, I said when you talk about American, like Latinos and Hispanic, like I don't know the whole immigrant. I don't. Yeah, that's something I don't know anything about, like the whole immigrant or migrant experience, because that's that helps complicate. That I mean, that's why I say it's a bit more layered. I think it seems with those communities. That's what okay, it seems like. Even with an American background, usually it is a, uh, like you know, like Scottish, uh, Welsh, or something like that. There's usually some type of outside national or uh, point of origin. What, what's that? For you? Well, that's. But you're talking about people that you're that would be like way, way, way back. Right. What would that be? Because that, that's never been made clear to me as many times as I've seen you on shows. Hmm? I said that's never been Sorry. clear to me. Yeah, like I said, my yeah, my family what's never been made clear. I'm not an immigrant. So I don't come from an immigrant background. No, no, yeah, I get that. But I mean, right. your white side still, you know, everybody has a European origin or some, some nationality, right. What, right. no matter how far it goes back. And everybody knows what it is. So what's what's that uh, as far as your white side is, is concerned? French, I would think. What's that? French, I would think. Oh, you would think? Okay, well, we'll, we'll go with that. French people have a whole bunch of different looks. Um, <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, I think moving on, like I said, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess what I'm curious about from your title is you seem, I think you seem more interested. I I, I I see where the biracial or the mixed race thing comes in, but it seems more of a, I think you seem to have more of an issue between, is it black communities and Latino communities? That seems more of an issue for you with well, this, not, not this really. video because you saw the, the individual that got called a, a slur by someone with a Spanish surname. Well, the, the, the guy, he went into a, a, a building and the black security guard asked him to leave. And uh, the, she, she called into the police department. She said, I have a black male here and he won't leave the building. Then he said, black, I'm black. Why are you calling me black? I didn't know I was black. And he, he, he didn't like it. <laughs> well, where was it? What was he? You know, where was this? Uh, he was, uh, was in somewhere in Mississippi. He he goes around the country doing this, uh, what they call auditing thing, going into buildings and trying to mm -hmm. see if the police will uh, uh, break their uh, civil rights, violate their civil rights. So he didn't like what? the fact he, he, he go. that's what they do. They go into buildings and see if people will uh, violate their civil rights because they don't want people to. But he didn't like being identified as a black man, but that's what she saw in him. So, I mean, what else is she going to call him? Okay. So, where's the guy from? I don't know, but his name is Sean Paul Reyes. So, he's he's from okay. Long Island. He looks Dominican okay. to me. Okay. And, he, and before I saw him, I watched a lot of his videos. He would go to these weird places, these lily white places. Oh, I see. Was that the last guy that you showed on the screen? Yes. Okay. He and a woman thought... So wait a minute. A woman thought that guy was... Black. Black. She described him as a black man. Really? I'm like, that's what I saw when I first saw his uh, face. I said, yeah, he looks black. More or less black to me. So mm -hmm. I said, that's... Because I saw the videos he was getting. He would go to these lily white towns and they would uh, quickly turn on him. And I was like say, saying to myself, man, uh, what's, what's going on with this? And then once I saw him, I said, oh, now I see. <laughs> now I see why they're doing this. Because they have, there's this other guy, this white guy, he was auditing too. 
in California, but he'll talk to the cops any kind of way. And even though they can get strong on the guy, but they kind of give him more rope, so to speak. But with this guy, <laughs> they're looking at him like, man, what the hell are you doing around here? And all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. Really? So that lady thought that guy, if I'm if I'm looking at the picture, if I recall the picture correctly, because I'm just trying to remember that guy. Let me see if I can bring him back up. Yeah, I can bring him yeah. back up. Yeah. I hate when this thing does this. I don't know why this uh, has this little pause. This guy right here. <laughs> Can you see him? Yeah, no. I didn't. So he's, he's the, he, okay. Yeah, he has, no. I wouldn't have, yeah, I went right off the bat, I would not have mistaken him for a black person. Right. Now, I, I can understand that because he looks a little slightly different. But when his hair is curled, I would have I would have mistaken him for someone who was Latino. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what he is basically. He is that. But a black guy was just a black guy. Yeah, yeah, but he I mean he's on the uh, black side of things okay. because he's I believe he's right, a Dominican. Wow. I believe he's a Dominican. So he was in some <laughs> town in the south. Is that it? Right, and you know they're not used to seeing guys looking like no. him. So, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is now. Probably I mean, the me, dumb person who called that in. Well, I mean, it depends, you know. But it's again, you dumb, know, it's probably a dumb person. The South. The way, let's let's face it. The South is not the the. It's not the center of progress. Uh oh, we we just got. It's uh, not uh, the center of technology. We, we, now watch what you say, because we just got a guest there. He's in the South now. So. I don't care. <laughs> I used to visit the South. I visited yeah. the South. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, he's in the Carolinas, though. I, I believe they're a little bit smarter than Mississippi, right? Well, you see, okay, here's the thing. North Carolina, you got Triangle Park. So, yeah, you also have some pretty decent college. You have some pretty good colleges in North Carolina. UNC Chapel Hill. You got Duke. Yeah, so, I mean, depends on the state. <laughs> but for the most part, the South is... Not, I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, don't blame me. I'm not responsible, but I like to have, I, I, I the, really, I like it, to have a talk the, with this guy, though. It's the poorest part of the country. It's the one with the least resources. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, there are parts. I mean, there are parts. I mean, if, if there are parts of the South that people are moving to, right? Like oh, yeah, Florida, uh, Georgia. Well, yeah, they'll Florida. Come, they'll go to Florida Atlanta, is different. They'll go to Miami. Florida is different, though. It's, it's the South, but people yeah, really, forget it's the that. South. But people forget that, that it is, is the South because it's, 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 it's different. It's a different vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, it depends on what part of Florida you're going into. If you're talking Miami, yeah, the truth. But like I said, um, so it depends on what you know. Like some parts of the South, people are moving to even now, moving to Atlanta. Moving to Miami, of course, the the, the rents, the mortgages are going way, way up. <laughs> yeah. The price of living is going sky high, going up sky high in those. Now, in those before, before I bring states. on the, uh, our other two uh, guests, uh, let me see if I can make get it clear on your position. So you know, once they start, they might ask you some questions. So you know, we can be very clear on what your position is because I, I was listening to a video of yours. And I think your position is that you don't want to be called black and you are biracial. And that's what a you video of mine, a yes. video of mine. Yes. Uh, my, I don't have a position other than I'm biracial. Right. That's, right. that's not a position. That's a reality. So it's not a position. Position implies some kind of intellectual fidelity to something. Or devotion to something. I have no intellectual fidelity to it. It's just who I am as a person. So right. it's, and that, it's and, not, and I can't. I can't have a devotion to something that I am. And that's what right. you're so uh, like saying. I have a devotion to being brown, brown haired, or something like that, or having brown eyes. No, right. it's what right. I have: brown eyes and brown hair. Right. It's what you are, but it's also what you're promoting as well, right? Promoting? No, I'm not promoting. In other words, you're saying we 
we are biracial and everybody should, you know. I'm not promoting it. it. No, I'm not. Okay. That's not my deal. Okay. I'm sure there's. Oh, oh, because I heard you talk about biracial I'm... stuff. I don't. The videos, you got to keep in mind with my channel. My channel is not about, my channel is about film, TV analysis, news and opinion. Oh, okay. I have a couple of one off videos where I get with my one offs um, and specials, I can talk about anything. And so I've done like maybe two or three, maybe four about biracial stuff. And I might do one after I'm after I leave here. We'll see. You, one I'm supporter. Do one. you got a supporter right here. He's oh. biracial. That's a fact. Yeah, it's true. And I, and I never denied that myself either. But see, no. and Psy Psychopathias doesn't deny it. But at the same time, I no. say, when I bring up Michi X, I say, they like to emphasize her blackness. I like to emphasize her Polishness. And I say that well, you, you could do both. Right. Well, see, here's the thing. When you made that argument, I remember that, like, your argument that you made was really just stating facts. Right. Like, if that's a fact about her, it's, you know, what you're doing is stating fact. But the problem is, if you have the position that this person is solely this, and you state the fact that, no, that person can't be solely this because this person is, is this ah, in addition to being that. It's funny you should say that because according to Michi X herself, she mm -hmm. likes to state that she is only black, even though she says she's right. Polish, but she only no, talks about black. No, because she's one of those. Oh yeah, not surprised. Uh, I we, there's a name I have for them. I call them wannabes, and then they're the militants. <laughs> wannabes are people who biracials who simply wish to be identified as monoracial. That's my nickname for them. It's wannabes. Right. And I also call them the I, ones I, are politically involved militants. That's my nickname. I it's just mine. Right. It's she not she, she emphasized she and psychopathias, they emphasize her blackness. I'm just pointing out her Polishness. I didn't say that her Polishness is uh predominant. I I said, hey, her name is Polish. Her right. father's Polish, her culture is Polish. She admitted <laughs> that she cooks Polish foods. Right. She speaks Polish. Polish probably. Um, yeah. Yeah. She, she, she had and so, see, notice what I said before. What you're stating is a fact. You're stating some of these facts, right? If these are facts about her, what you're doing is merely stating facts. So the the issue that that's why I said the issue is when you state certain facts to people in that regard, it gets more difficult. Right. Especially um, if they want them to be something else that they promote themselves as being which right, her, her right. case is a black militant. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is she because I, I, I I've never I don't think I've seen any of her videos. I've heard the name mentioned a few times, but I haven't seen her videos. So is she like an act? activist or something. Well, that's what she likes us to believe. She's a foul mouth individual. <laughs> you know, and wow, really? I, I guess that's that's what blackness is to her, having a foul mouth. <laughs> well see that's why see see here's here's I haven't really made this point too much, but because I don't talk about being biracial or biracial aspects with monoracial other kinds of people. So I don't normally would talk about this sort of thing. But see one of the reasons that I don't deal with people like that is partly their behavior. And I've dealt with people like that on social media groups, biracial groups, and they're so wrapped up. Like from a political standpoint, I don't have much of an issue. I'm like, okay, I understand you're passionate culturally and politically, and that's understandable, but you're biracial whether you want to face it or not. I mean, don't get mad at me. You can you can get mad at me all you want. I'm not the one that made you biracial, but that's what you are. And the the mixed race people who want to deny their biraciality and try to be monoracial and fit into monoracial communities, I can do nothing but pity them. And she hates when uh, you bring up the fact that she's Polish. Oh yeah. And sometimes sometimes oh, yeah. she just say, "Okay, yeah, I am Polish, but I'm that's black." One of <laughs> yeah, that's one, that is one of the hallmarks of the of the wannabes. That's one of the hallmarks, and the militants. They get very mad about being. I've had biracial people when I've been on social media groups. 
I've had biracial people tell me, other biracial people tell me, they've met people who look, you know, as white as a sheet, right? They're maybe half black, half white. And you, you, you mention it or they, somebody mentions it, oh, they get upset. They get furious. They'll be like, I'm black and I'm this and I'm that. I mean, they don't, they don't want to deal with the reality of who they are. And when I say deal with the reality, they know what they are, but they don't want to accept what they are because they feel that it'll be easier to be monoracial. And you know what I feel? I, they're, they're, I, feel that the, I feel that they're lying because, like I said, I like to put myself in your shoes growing yeah. up with a white parent. And I, let, let's just say, mother, you suckled the breasts. She wiped your uh, knee when you skinned your knee. She fed you, put you to sleep. You're not going to just say, I hate my mother. She's a white devil and a cracker. <laughs> I'm all in with blackness. Well, that wasn't my situation, but, but I get what your point is. And the point is, people often say that in relation to parents, right? Right? I can't speak for other people. I can only speak for myself. And so often I communicate what I've heard from other biracial people as a way of providing context and providing experience. So if I just say, oh, this is my experience, to me, that's invalid. That's one of the things I also say to other biracial people. It's not just about you. That's why it's important to learn about other mixed race people if you're biracial. That's why I'm on biracial groups. That's why I'm on biracial YouTube. You want to get to know other mixed race people, their background, their experience, their lives, and they will educate you, even if you're mixed race, because you have your experience and your experience informs you, but it cannot inform you about being biracial as a whole. Cannot do that. You have to have that education, right? That's true of anybody in any ethnic or racial group. Right? Okay. You got black people that are raised in, in white suburbs. That's a different cultural experience compared to being raised in a, let's just say, a black suburb, right? right. Very black different. Ghetto. Black ghetto, you mean? No, no, no. I deliberately <laughs> said, black, no, 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 no. I said black suburb. I said that deliberately. Okay. Because it's easy to <laughs> automatically assume that. No, no. I said that's that true. deliberately. Uh, uh, okay, if you're, if, you're, if you're in Atlanta, then I guess it's a black suburb. <laughs> and, and in some other parts of the country, like D.C., right? <laughs> the, the D.C. Memphis, area, Memphis. Virginia, right? Detroit. There are black suburbs. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I did that deliberately because you can't just assume that. You can't right. just assume it's that suburb or that slum or or lower socioeconomic area there are other kinds of neighborhoods too right, right. so you got to look at the well, that's a more interesting and to me that's a more interesting comparison right yeah that's if actually you know, I, 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 consider, I consider all family. those things i even factor in yeah. whether or not the right. next person has a if you have a fa white father or a black father things come out different for you as well well i don't again no, when I'm saying I see that, but I'm not into that stuff. Like I'm not into the kind, you know, if you had this parent, then this percentage, this would happen to you. No, 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 no. I don't. Well, I, don't I, oh, I mean, you just, you think a little differently, not necessarily. Uh, no, here's, here's what you got to understand. Here's what you got to understand. You got to understand if you're biracial. Uh, you got to understand with the biracial people that see, that's why I don't deal in the, the wannabes and the, the militants. I don't deal with those people because I've I encountered them on mixed race groups. And to me, it's just a matter of common sense and logic. That's all it is. Like to me, it never was a big deal. It wasn't until I was 40. I got to be really honest. Like I'm in my 50s. I never gave much of any thought about being mixed race until I was about in my 40s or in other mixed race people. Why? Too busy getting an education, getting my, my bachelor's degree, too busy working, too busy having a life. I don't care about that stuff. Being mixed race didn't matter to me. Now, once I got to a point, I, I began to say, well, I really don't know much about people like me. Like, I knew other mixed race people, but I didn't see them that way. I didn't see them as, oh, okay, you're this and that and that and that, okay. You just saw them as people where I was growing up. But 
when I got older, I realized, oh, I have to learn more about people like me and others who are also mixed race. And I went on the mixed race groups and stuff like that on social media. And you start educating yourself. You start listening to people. You start hearing the stories. Um, and But not all mixed race people are like that. There are mixed race people and biracial people who will deal with reality. And they, you know, they're, and they're people who are very proud. Like for me, I'm like easy going with it. It's not a huge deal. There are people who are very, very, I don't want to say, uh, very, very proud of being biracial. It's, a, you know, and they're very, very strong. And, that, you know, I say, you know, that's perfectly fine with me because I've, I've always been mixed race, right? I've always been a mixed race person. See, but in my circumstance, it's different because I'm somebody, and I tell people this, when I was growing up, I could I was mixed and that was that. It was just the way it was when I was growing up. But for other biracial people, they may grow up in communities and areas where people told them, oh, you're white or you're black or you're Asian or you're uh, Chinese or Japanese or whatever it is, or Mexican or whatever. You. Um, so yeah, it, it, you know, where you grow up makes a huge difference. Not, right. yeah. not just the family, but where you grow up, community is gigantic. So with somebody like this Michi X, I don't know where she grew up. Uh, just Detroit. Where from. Well, see, there you go. <laughs> Detroit is a largely, uh, black city, right? Yeah. So she probably grew up in an environment where she didn't probably know Polish people. Oh, no, her father was. Polish. No, she grew up with her father, Polish. And she learned oh, she culture. Did. Yeah, she has his last name. Oh, Polish really? last name. Okay. That's why, that's why I always so, joke with her. So, I said, Rob, Rob, when you say she grew up with, her, grew with her father. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. But that still, she grew up in Detroit. So when yeah. you look at the probably part of the reason she is who she is, is the environment that she was in. And her grandparents right? came from Poland. Oh, that's why. And I, that's why I joke. I say, hey, you're a European. What's going on in Ukraine and Poland right now? That, that, that's you. That, that, that's, that has nothing to do with us. That's you. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. You know, how can you be a black? How can you be a black activist militant? <laughs> and you have people right there in the war in Ukraine, Poland. <laughs> see that that but again see you're you're it that's part of what i was talking about it's this um how i put it i can't recall the name the the the, the word but it's this i mean it's a part of what i see with some of these I, that's why i call them wannabes i know some people don't like the term but i don't <sighs> Uh, you know, it, to me, it, it's fine because, and it, and it works because they truly don't want to deal with, or they don't see themselves as mixed race people. Because for them, I guess they don't feel there's anything to that, right? I've heard some of biracial people go, oh, well, we really don't have a culture and we really don't have a community and we really, really don't have that. Well, y your culture are your cultures. It's what you come from. Those are your cultures, right? Right, because we're mixed race people, right? So you have your particular mixed race heritage. Those are the things that you celebrate, culture wise, culturally, right? Right. Now you don't have to celebrate some um, biracial culture, but right? <laughs> yeah. Now um, I want to see if Pookie uh, has any questions for you or uh, Tyron. I'll bring him on in a second and. Before he uh, might want to ask you a question, let me do say my last thing that I always bring up on Psychopathia Show. And they, I, I see what they do. They start countering by trying to say that she, her parents are biracial or, or, or she's half and half as well. I always bring up Lena Horne as an example or Adam Clayton Powell as an example mm -hmm. <laughs> of people who are not biracial, but people who are have two black parents, but right. they are but they are actually whiter. They're, like They're whiter right. than so they would probably be like um MGM, what do you call multi-generational mixed? Yeah. 
So down the line, they had some probably, tra- you know, grandparent or they had ancestors that were European or something like that. All right, that's why I like to remind people that some people are caught up thinking that biracial people are somehow so very white when I seen about half of them look uh, blacker than I do. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I I I have uh, known in in social media groups, I have known some biracial people who looked almost like African American. I'm sorry, black. Who looked <laughs> like black? You know, a black woman or a black man, right? But they're mixed race. They're biracial. Yeah, so biracial people come in all types. Yeah. They come in all shades, as we like to say. And the, original, in and the original ones, uh, you know, if you want to say the original uh, unmixed black person and then unmixed white person came out looking black, as we know it today, and not white at all in, in most cases, because there was no traces of whiteness in the black side, you know? But anyway, mm-hmm. let me see if Pookie... Uh, because I see he, he got on a few times. Let me see. Do you have anything you want to ask him, Pookie? Okay, I guess he might be sleep listening. Let's bring Tyron. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm curious as to what I would like to get back. I'm more interested in the, the topic at this point. Okay, um, yeah, that's why I let you on because both topics actually kind of merge together because, again, I think a lot of people won't say it. Hispanics, they don't like to verbalize it in front of white mm-hmm. people, but in front of black people or others, they try to say that they're white because that's the side that they prefer. And I'm, I'm saying that's, what they, that's why I, I title it They Choose Spain because, and also because of they, the fact that we discussed earlier is the fact that they blame the United States on Latin America's problems, but they don't blame Spain. They don't blame Portugal. Matter of fact, I was just reading up on Brazil. I hadn't even realized that the Dutch had Brazil mm-hmm. before the Portuguese. I, just, I literally just found that out last week. I hadn't known that. And then the Portuguese beat the Dutch. I said, man, the Dutch, because I was looking at the Dutch empire. I said, man, I guess the Dutch had an empire and then everybody else just took it away. <laughs> well, the Dutch had an empire. The Spanish had an empire. Yeah, the but Dutch the ones did. that lasted were the British Empire, the French, German to an extent. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's interesting when you mention that. See, but you have to understand with the Latin, uh, with the South American and Central American countries, you had the Monroe Doctrine. Right. That's why it's the U.S. and what the U.S.'s influence has been in the 20th century and 21st century. Yeah, the Monroe Doctrine. Right. What is the Monroe Doctrine? Hemispheric control by the United States. In other words, anything that happens in the hemisphere uh, has to be the province of the U.S. They have to have a say. They have to be involved. They have to be concerned about it. Right. That's why Cuba was such a huge deal for the United States. Oh, okay. What do you think about right? what the light of life says? She said, oh, well, that person says you can make the argument that light skinned black people are really just multiracial individuals. Hmm. You, could, you could. I'm not going to lie. You can make that argument. And really, yeah, the truth you is, know, is really true. Yeah. I, you know, like I said, I'm a biracial person. So I deal primarily with people who are biracial. Multiracial. I know there there are spaces where I guess it's included, right? Some people have like so called light skinned people. That's not a phrase I I use myself, but um, so that aspect I don't know really much about. My knowledge is more biracial people, multiracial people. Okay. Now I think uh, now you want to promote your channel to the people. Oh, my channel? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, My official, well, actually, it's my new official channel that I would promote uh, because I'm trying to get, uh, we're we're looking to go into production with that channel and start doing lives and start doing content. And so that's writer Albert Lanier. That's writer Albert Lanier. 
and I'm going to be, you know, doing shows about writing and being a writer. I was a freelancer for over 20 years, uh, 22 years. So, so okay. yeah, writer Albert Lanier. Now, let me see. Uh, we got Tyron on. Let's see if he wants to ask you because we're going to uh, kind of switch it over to the second half of the uh, topic tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see if uh, Tyron uh, has any questions for you. I guess he may have taken a break as well. <laughs> I know. I, I know. Uh, I guess know, everybody. You know, eating, I got to admit, I've been eating while I've been on this live. So I'm like eating lunch while I'm enjoying <laughs> this live. So I guess everybody's sleeping and enjoying that. <laughs> watching TV. Normally, normally, I bring people on immediately. So I, I, I think that's probably why. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yeah, I was wondering. Because your intro was long. I was like, oh, is that the way he normally does it? Mm, interesting. It, yeah, it was actually, <laughs> if you weren't here, it was actually going to be ended up being longer because I was going to go into a little more detail because I like calling right. the uh, so called Latinos out. Got to do that. <laughs> yeah, he, you said it. See, that's what I was suspecting. That was what <laughs> I was suspecting. I didn't want to say it because I'm like, okay, I'll let you say it because it's you, you know, it's your channel. I'm like, yeah, that's what it's really about, right? Like, you've got yeah. an issue. Well, and the issue is that they all think that they're white, no matter what they look like. And you just can't, and they're only doing it because whites are in control. Now, if whites were not in control, then they wouldn't really give a damn. They try to be whatever it is that they, uh, who's in control. And to me, that's being a coward. Now, I know some of them, you can't really tell what they are. <laughs> but, uh, no, okay, here we got a troll. I think that's a troll, but I'm not putting it on, on the screen. But uh, <laughs> I just Do think you get a lot of trolls. I, you said you got haters, right? Critics. Yeah. Uh, well, they, you they get took a lot, You get a lot of trolls? I have uh, one crazy maniac troll. That's the guy that took the channel down. Oh. Uh, his partner, he doesn't troll this channel anymore. He did the damage and now he's out of here. Uh, and then there's another guy that used to troll and we, we just left that guy alone. And maybe mm. he wants to, uh, maybe he's feeling lonely, wants to make a comeback. I don't know, but I'm telling you right <laughs> now, we, we crossed that bridge. It's done. It's over. I'm not going back there. So, yeah, you know, that's the, because you said you'd been on YouTube since what, 2014? Right. It's the weird thing about YouTube, isn't it? I've only been on YouTube, like, doing my own channel. Like, I've only been on YouTube technically. I was on panels before, but I've only been on YouTube basically since this year. So I've only been on for, like, I don't know, three or four months or whatever it was. Man. I've been fortunate. I don't get lots of trolls. I call my, uh, I call my channel the No Trolls, my other channel, my old channel, as I call it, the No Troll Zone. Um, because if people try to start anything, they get blocked immediately. They get timed out. They get deleted. Yeah, see, I, I don't really block people too much on here because I kind of like people to be able to express themselves because I, I can't stand when I'm on another channel and the first thing that people want to do is block and delete. I hate that. <laughs> well, here's, here's the way that I observe it because what I saw with the chat was that the chat's not about, it has nothing to do with me. It really is about the people in the chat. And so my feeling is I've got to be able to put, you know, it's got to be good so that people feel comfortable coming into the chat, having conversations, talking, because people talk among themselves in my chat at times. And I think that's, I think that's good. I think it's something that's okay as far as I'm concerned. So I want to make sure that people can come in and have a nice environment to be in and they don't have some dumb trolls making weird statements or something like that. So I do it for the people coming into the chat because I think that's what you should do. After all, the chat's about them. It's not about me. So Yeah, my main trolls, though, they disappear, which is good, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> when you start getting, when you start saying, okay, I'm going to block you, they're probably, oh, okay, we got to go. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. See, those are the smart ones. See, the smart ones, the dumb ones are the ones that stay. Yeah. I mean, Man, to me, I, it, 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 
if people control in an entertaining way, fine. If you're just here to annoy, then that's when it's time to go. Call names, then that's when it's time to go. I don't believe in trolling, period. I don't, for me, I think it's stupid and it's a waste of time. Like, it, don't you have bad, something better to do with your life? I, know, I like Seriously, being entertained, so. <laughs> to me, yeah. it's just weird. Okay. I just need a dog. All right, so with that, uh, we're going to switch to the second part. You want to stick around or you got to go? So I don't know um, what's the second part? I'm just curious. Uh, this is about pan Africans and uh, uh, what are they trying to hide? Are pan Africans trying to hide something? Yeah, that's that, that's what we're trying to discover. <laughs> Let me guess. I gather you're not pan African. No. Okay. Okay. I see. <laughs> what are they trying to hide? Um, I think I'll go. I think you know. If, no, that's fine. If I were to stick around, I think there'd be, be people like he's biracial. He's <laughs> he's not entirely this. So I'm like, hey, it's no big deal to me. But I was like, eh. I hear you. That's so, why. Uh, that's why I want to ask first. You know? <laughs> no, I thought that was a polite thing to do because I because I, I know I know I, I like I said I've been in monoracial black spaces before, and so I'm like, okay. Yeah, you got it. I also before you go, you know, it's yeah. kind of offensive to call us monoracial. You know. Okay, black. Well, that's that's the official nomenclature, right? That's what we use, monoracial. But okay, black spaces. Okay, when you go back to the uh, biracial spaces, l let them know what I just said earlier, is that you have black people with two black parents that are whiter than biracials, so you can't really call them monoracial in, in a sense, right? Mm. How about that? But yeah, I mean, you know, it's basic terminology, right? You know, monoracial, biracial, multiracial, stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, but thanks for yeah, having me. Before you go, one more um, question. We, we got a, we got one more yeah. question from the audience. He says, yeah. "Forecast okay. says, is the term mulatto offensive to you?" I never use it. Yeah, I never use that. Oh, okay, I don't care for it personally. I know there are people who use it, and they have. Uh, YouTube names based on it and stuff. So, oh, okay. Hey, if you want to use that, that's up to you. I'm not here to enforce the usage of that word, but personally, right. I don't use it. But hey, if other people want to, that's fine. Well, again, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank you. Any, anytime. Bye. All right. So that was uh, Alan there. Uh, I'm sure you've seen him around in many circles. Got my man Tyron. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he went to sleep, but we we are uh, Pookie. He kept trying to get on. I let him on. I just sent Tyron.